Hello and welcome to the home of the Ghost Owl, continuing with our Warhammer the Old World look at the main rulebook and we're now on to something really interesting which is the weapons and armor part one we're going to be looking at the different weapon profiles their rules seeing which ones we like and which ones we don't so let's dive into the first part so weapon profiles you've got range all weapons have a range characteristic if the weapon's range is combat the weapon can only be used in hand-to-hand -hand combat against enemies the user is engaged with the weapon's range is a number. The weapon is a missile weapon, and the number given indicates the weapon's range in inches. If the weapon has two range characteristics, shown both shown as a number, the first is a minimum range, and the second is the maximum range. Strength. The weapon's strength is used when rolling to wound. For missile weapons, this is normally a numerical value, but not always. And for combat weapons, this may be shown as an S indicating the strength is as the user. So you're using the strength on the user's profile. Or if you get S plus a number, that is the user's strength plus a modifier. Armor piercing or AP, this is always a negative modifier applied to the dice rolled when making an armor save. Special rules, many weapons have universal special rules, which we've already covered in previous videos. And then you've got notes. Some weapons have notes specifying when or who can use them. So combat weapons then. So more than one combat weapon. If a unit is equipped with two or more combat weapons, you must choose which it will use when the combat is chosen. The entire unit, including the command, must use the same weapon, with the exception of units that have the Motley Crew special rule. Characters can always choose separately. The unit champion also has the option to be equipped differently to the rest of the unit. They can choose which weapon they will use. And unless the weapon itself states otherwise, a unit cannot change which weapons it's using between rounds of combat if they remain locked in place and engaged in combat. The weapon chosen, therefore, in the first round must be used for the entire duration of the combat. So hand weapons, as we can see on our oblique sword dark elf unit there, they have a range, which is combat, a strength, which is as the user. They have no AP, no special rules. On the notes, unless specified otherwise, all models are assumed to be equipped with a hand weapon. So this is the basic weapon. I mean, there's not much to say here. It just, it just is as it is. It means that everybody's got some type of hand weapon. Something like this bleak sword unit uh, often combined, it, combined with a shield. So a hand weapon and a shield means you're looking at something where you're going for a little bit more durability. Um, and, you know, if you've got something like uh, archers, they've got a hand weapon, they get attacked, they've, they've got a hand weapon to, to attack back with. So not really much to say about hand weapons. They are the absolute basic thing out there. And there's probably better choices, but you're going to be paying points for it. So two hand weapons or an additional hand weapon. So range is combat, strength is strength, AP is there's none because it's basically the hand weapons. But if you have two of them, you do get the extra attacks plus one. So keeping with the dark elf theme straight away, you're thinking of witch elves. They've got two daggers, for example. However, it does mean it requires two hands and therefore you don't really want to be paying points for shields because you can't use the shields in combat. So unless you really need the shield because you think you're going to get shot um, and you want it to be an extra save in shooting, which, to be honest, in most cases, I'm not sure the full value in paying points for shields is there. If you're using weapons, that requires two hands in all but except maybe certain elite units. But if you took a unit of which elves, for example, I wouldn't, not that you can, but um, or that you'd want to. I just can't think of a time when you, if you're taking the two daggers, that you'd want to take two daggers and a shield, for example. So a flail. Now, this is an interesting one. I used to run corn marauders in my Warriors of Chaos with flails. So uh, range is combat. Now, they've got strength plus two, which is pretty damn nice, with an AP of minus two. Uh, strength, uh, special rules, they require two hands, so you're not getting that shield. Um, 
but a strength modifier only applies during the first round of combat. So they're only getting that plus two strength in the first round of combat. They do get the AP minus two all the time. I actually quite like the look of flails. Um, I mean, in most cases, you don't really want to be locked in combat anyway. Um, you don't have to charge to get that plus two either. So even if you get charged, you're going to get that plus two strength when you attack back, if you get to attack back. So overall, I actually quite like flails. Um, I think flails on a character can also be quite nice. Like we've seen some of the Tomb Kings characters have flails. And I think where you've got those multiple attacks hitting a, you know, a character strength, which could be something like strength four or five, then you're up to a strength of six or seven in the first round of combat with that AP of minus two. Um, I think in, in a lot of cases, the lack of shield in combat's probably not an issue. Uh, Marauders, you're probably going for lots of models anyway in that unit. So I actually quite like the look of the flare. And I don't see that having the strength modifier only applying in the first round of combat being a problem, particularly given you don't need to be charging to get it. Right, on to great weapons. So great weapons, range combat, strength is strength of the user plus two, like the flail, and an AP of minus two. But um, you do get the strength the whole time. So special rules, armor bane one. So if you're rolling sixes to wound, you're going to be getting an AP of minus three, which basically means, uh, you know, you're going to be... Uh, the people aren't going to be getting saves against you unless they're rocking three plus armor safe. There's not many of that around. They do require two hands, so again, no shields. But they do strike last, and this is this is the thing for me where you know, look if you looked at a great weapon and a flail, for example, I actually prefer the flail. Um, the the striking last, I think, in the way that the current rules are with step up and everything else, is a problem. Um, You've got to be very confident in your durability uh, or very confident in your positioning of unit and target selection to ensure that you will survive long enough to, to attack back with always strikes last. And, and the strikes last is, is clearly one where the wide, wide units that you see um, having very long fighting rank is is quite common because you need enough models in the fighting rank to be able to attack back with so yeah maybe on specific units you're going to get value out of those great weapons um you see you've got a unit of dwarf hammerers there i actually do quite like the hammerers um but you know you're not getting that shield in combat um I think the flip side of that is if you've got a unit which has shield wall, which like the hammers have shield wall, that actually taking the shield is probably a good thing so that you can get the benefit from that rule. But the strikes last is a problem, is a problem. And, and you know, if I'm looking between a flail and a great weapon, to have strength plus two every turn and armor bane, but but have it mitigated by strikes last. I still think I prefer the flail, but I'm just looking at this on paper and you should never truly do things of value, um, uh, evaluation of units on paper. That's why test games are so important. So definitely you need to test it out. Um, I'd be interested to know in comments down below what you guys think um, about great weapons uh, and the always strikes last. I mean, they've always had like a strikes last mechanic and, and there are definitely things in this edition where you can mitigate some of that. If you get the charge, you get the initiative bonus and stuff like that. But overall, like I said, I think it's I think some specific units might get value out of great weapons, but that strikes last is a problem for me. Okay, halberd. So you think when you think halberd, you think empire halberd is first thing that comes to mind. So range combat strength plus one. So you think of an empire soldier. He's on a strength of three, so he's now at a strength of four. That's pretty nice. AP of minus one definitely helps. You know, a lot of people you come up against, if you're coming up against heavy armor, you know, they're down to a six plus save, heavy armor and shield five plus save. Still got a good chance of, of taking a few down. Um, uh, so, yeah, I think the halberd there, um, 
looks pretty nice. Armor Bane 1 as well, so there's sixes to wound. It's now AP minus 2, uh, but does require two hands. So, but halberds, I quite like them. Interesting thing with the halberds, though, is you think about how long a halberd is, uh, but they don't get any supporting attacks or fighting extra rank. So that is, that's an interesting one. But uh, definitely the halberds there have some value against, um, I would say, kind of up-tiering of units where they, they can at least deal with some armor, um, which, you know, a hand weapon is, is just not going to do for you. So halberd, yeah, quite interesting, but no supporting attacks. Right, Morning Star. So this tends to be something that's seen a lot in Bretonia, or not a lot, but is more associated, I should say, with Bretonians. So um, range is combat, strength is strength plus one, and they've got an AP of minus one. They've got no special rules, uh, but the strength modifier only applies during the first round of combat. So basically it's like a slightly worse flail. I mean, it's okay. Uh, I yeah, I mean it's okay. I don't think it's. I don't think the Morning Star there sticks out as being. Oh, this is really cool. Um, yeah, it's it's all right. Uh, right, a whip. Oh look, we've got uh, our Sisters of Slaughter there with whips. So range combat strength is as the user, and they got no AP. Now they do get to find extra rank, and they do get to strike first. That's really quite nice. So you know, I could see this unit really going into units of empire troops like state troops skirmishers with light armor skinks um you know peasants peasant bowmen anyone with that light armor where the lack of ap and the lack of strength isn't a problem um the fact they can find an extra rank and they strike first means you're going to be putting a lot of attacks down um uh you know uh, early in you know in the combat so you know they're not going to be suffering from that attack back that much um there's it doesn't only requires a single hand right so you've got the option to have a light armor and a shield if if you want if, if the rules allow for a particular unit so the whip i actually quite like the whip um i actually quite like the, the whip as a unit uh, a whip on a character no but a whip in a unit like these Sisters of Slaughter, that could be really quite nice. Really quite nice. So I like that. Okay. Right, we're on to lances now. So the lance typically associated with cavalry. So range is combat strength plus two, AP minus two, and a special rule of armor bane sixes to wound, giving you that AP minus three. So they can only be used by troop type cavalry or monster i ridden monster they can only be used in a turn in which the wielder charged in subsequent turns the model uses its hand weapon yeah so this is the thing with lances lances you need to get the charge with them so to be honest i mean i'd really only want to be taking lances ideally on cavalry models that have the counter charge ability um but still uh you know most cavalry are going to benefit from having lances to some degree or another you need to make the most of having uh, a devastating charge which is going to require the extra strength it's going to require that extra ap um but uh but yeah having counter charge just makes lances that much better because if they can counter charge they're always going to be charging which means they're always going to get to use that lance so units with counter charge lances like should be a default pick um but overall lances you know have good value in ensuring that cavalry charges are doing the appropriate amount of damage and you've got the cavalry spear so range is combat strength plus one ap minus one but they do get to fight in an extra rank which is which is quite nice um, but only the only the rider gets to fight in the extra rank not the horse they can only be used by troop type cavalry monster or chariot um strength and ap modifiers only apply in a turn in which the wield are charged and you cannot make supporting attacks in a turn in which you charge so that's kind of like i don't know the cavalry spear there so one you 
you only get the plus one strength and the the a, extra AP when you charge. But when you charge, you lose a whole bunch of supporting attacks. So you either get to make lots of attacks with low strength and no AP, or you get to make fewer attacks but with higher strength and higher AP. But it's only plus one strength and it's only minus one AP. I mean, yeah, sure for like light cavalry, um, for example. But overall, cavalry spear doesn't. I, I prefer the lance in terms of what it can do. Um, depends on what your obviously your weapon options are. You know, not everyone's going to have an option for a lance, right? But I, I really like what the lance could do on the charge, whereas the cavalry spear, um, you know, yeah, I guess, like I say, light, light cavalry attacking light units. That's really what you're looking at on this one. Okay, the throwing spear, that's got a range of combat. It's got a strength as a user, an AP of, of none. Special rules, it fights in an extra rank, and it can only be used in a turn in which the wielder charge. So a throwing spear, you have to charge to be able to use this, but you get to fight an extra rank. Subsequent turns, or if it did not charge, the model use hand weapons instead. So it's kind of like on the charge, you get an extra bunch of attacks, which again, you know, nice if you've got counter charge, for example. So, I mean, who might have something like this? I'm thinking, was it Sisters of the Thorn have throwing spears, potentially? Um, don't know, I haven't, haven't been through their rules, but, Assuming they do, I'm sure they, they did. Um, then, you know, in a, in a cavalry unit like that, like I said, if it's got counter charge, you're always going to be getting it. Uh, those extra attacks, which is nice. I mean, they're not strong attacks, um, but any extra attacks is nice, and particularly on the charge. So, yeah, throwing spears, I think, are okay. Um, because you it depend, it depends on how much you're paying points for them, but say a whole set of extra attacks with charge could be quite nice. Could be quite nice. Uh, again, you're looking really though at the targets here. Anything with armor um, is not a great target for this. Okay, and finally, then we've got the thrusting spear. So this is the end of this is the last of the the generic close combat weapon. So it's got range combat, strength of strength, AP of minus. Special rules: you fight in an extra rank. It can only be used by troop type infantry cannot make a supporting attack during a turn in which the wield charged but during a turn in which it was charged in its front arc you gain plus one initiative modifier i really like thrusting spears um you think you know okay so, you, so the, the thrusting spear is not as good as the halberd at dealing with armor and i think that's nice in terms of if you've got a delineation right the if we just take the spear and the halberd the halberd doesn't get the extra attacks but is better at dealing with heavier armor which kind of makes sense um you could definitely see units of spearmen who you know if you're able to to hold off charging getting that plus one initiative modifier can be nice um i wouldn't say it's going to be key though because like if you unless your unit has pretty good initiative to start with um, like, you know, if you're taking elves, they've got pretty good initiative to start with. That plus one initiative modifier could mean they still strike first, right? Could be a could be a game changer, or at least have equal initiative. But on low initiative models, is the plus one going to make much of a difference? Probably not. Um, but the supporting attacks is nice. So, you know, charging, being locked in combat, and then the next turn getting those extra attacks could be quite nice. So I wouldn't say that can't make a supporting attack during a charge is, is a real off-putting thing for the charge. So I do quite like the flexibility of the thrusting spear. Um, good for defensive work, not terrible on the charge. Um, it, its weakness is in dealing with armor, but you've got things like flails, great weapons, and halberds to deal with that. So, um, yeah, I think uh, I think spear units um could be really quite good um as say as sort of those maybe something like on the flank like sort of uh, a unit to protect flanks that sort of stuff which is kind of what you'd expect it's kind of what spear is designed to do right so overall that brings us say to the end of the combat weapons um i think uh, i think you know we, as we've gone through it we kind of highlighted the ones we like and the ones that you kind of think well, i'm not so sure about uh but overall i think there's a good balance there's a good mix in there um 
you can clearly see the ones that have got defined roles, which is nice. Let's say with spear, halberd, you can see what great weapons, flails, that sort of thing. I think I really quite like the potential of the flail. Um, strikes last is a problem. The whips really look quite interesting. That was a bit of a surprising one for me. I wasn't expecting whips to suddenly be something out there, but whips in a unit um, that is going after, you know, you think of whips versus these thrusting spears. You know, the whips are striking first um, and they get the fight in extra rank. Um, there's no issues with charging or being charged. Uh, it's got the same combat strength and AP. Uh, so, you know... <laughs> Uh, I really quite like whips. I just don't think we're going to see them that much. Um, but uh, but yeah, so uh, whips could be a real interesting one out there. Uh, so hopefully, more units get the option for it. Um, but yeah, I think it it the the lance I think is the one for me on the cavalry. Uh, a lance combined with counter charge is really good. Is really good. So yeah, it's it's gonna it's gonna always depend upon what other abilities the unit has specifically. We're gonna go into that on the faction focus. So as we go through the units, we're gonna be looking at their options, we're gonna be looking at which options are probably best for that unit based upon its stuff on the unit special rules. Um but there are some weapons here where you think, you know, character's got lots of choice of weapons. I just the strikes last is a concern on the great weapon. Um because of the way the current uh, the way the current uh, system plays. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is the end of the part one of our weapons and armor. We've gone through all of the close combat weapons. And next up is going to be the missile weapons and the armor. If you've enjoyed this video, though, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs up.